أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين This is a salawat of people who have just come back from work maybe I'm very tired so we perhaps need another very loud salawat صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Sisters and brothers in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We begin by sending our condolences to our 12th Imam, Imam Al Mahdi, Ajalallahu ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif, on the anniversary of martyrdom of our 6th Imam, Imam Ja'far al Sadiq, alayhi salam. And I hope you don't mind me standing not the traditional sitting down uh, just to keep everyone awake perhaps a uh, bit of animation and inshallah today will be an interactive talk I've, I've stopped giving uh, lectures I, I don't think the the uh, pedagogy approach where you just uh, scream at people and tell them what is right and wrong is the right method uh, so inshallah we're just moving towards a an androgogy approach where you know we're engaged in a discussion and inshallah we can reach a conclusion uh, for today so uh, we will begin inshallah by asking some questions and then inshallah we'll get into the debate and the the uh, the main sort of theme of today's talk the first question we like to ask and we are commemorating the martyrdom of uh, our sixth Imam is why do we have so many traditions from Imam Sadiq you notice that you know when when you hear our scholars and speak his lecturers they they speak they say uh, it is narrated from Imam Sadiq a lot of the times yes and uh, why is that I mean the, the main reason is because he lived in the era of expansion of knowledge of Ahl bayt in various uh, fields and there was essentially a political vacuum at that particular time. His imamate, he lived in a, a political vacuum. It was caused by you know, the, the destruction of the uh, Umayyad Empire and the rise of the, the Abbasids. It was that particular time, it was a bloody war, and he used that time. And of course, uh, his father, Imam al-Baqir, he um, uh, laid out the, the field for him to, to try to spread the knowledge of Islam and it was it was a very very good uh, uh, opportunity people can't see that my face is on the way um, so the, the yeah the number of uh, traditions preserved from the fifth and sixth Imam is more than all the hadith that have been uh, recorded uh, and and uh, uh, from from all of our other Imams right and and that is uh, the critical thing and he spent a lot of his time trying to preserve hadith. And this is very, very important because at the, the, the Sunnis, the, the, um, the Hanafis from Abu Hanif and others, we'll talk a bit about that later, um, it, they, you know, they, they didn't really give much attention to hadith at that particular time. But Imam al-Sadiq gave a lot of attention to hadith. And he wanted to preserve the hadith. And he wanted his students to memorize the hadith and write down the, the hadith from him and he always he says that what you hear from me is of course from my father and father etc and it goes back to Ali ibn Abi Talib and and eventually from the Prophet uh, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sallu ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad so which scholars did he teach you might it might be familiar with uh, some of the names um, in the list there um, you've got Hisham ibn al-Hakam you've got, you've got Aban ibn uh, you've got Hisham, uh, Hisham ibn Salim, you've got Abu Hanifa, and you've got also Jabir ibn Hayyan, the alchemist who we will mention later on. And he was someone that we should all be very proud of that he was a student of, uh, of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam, someone who people are using his um, uh, thinking and thought on chemistry at that particular time. And it's said that his classes and sessions of instructions produced around 4,000 scholars of hadith and other sciences. And this is all very, very um, important things that we must uh, cherish and we must uh, tell people about, 
that you know we are from the Ja'fari school of thought and ja Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq taught all these um, uh, people and also he, he actually um, had around 4,000 students who um, were graduated so to speak from his, his school. So the, the, the interesting thing about when I, when I study the life of Imam Sadiq as well as of course other Imams is that he engaged in a lot of debates and we are so in need of people engaging in debates these days, aren't we? You know, there, there is this thing about I know best and you don't know anything. And we don't know the, the etiquettes of debating, right? There's lots of this ego going around where, you know, I know better than you do. Um, we have, especially now with social media, the, 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 uh, the WhatsApps and things like that, people get annoyed, get angry, they, they start having fights. It's because my knowledge is greater than yours. And so therefore I am greater than you are, right? We don't even know the etiquettes of having a debate, right? And, you know, someone did a very short study where he found that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave so much opportunity for Iblis to speak when he was debating about, you know, whether to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. He said around 30% of their conversation or something. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving a time for Iblis to speak, right? Uh, and, and so therefore, you know, debates are, are very um, important, especially at this particular time. But when we go back to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, we find that he was engaging in a lot of debates. And one of the people he used to engage in debates with is, uh, are the, um, uh, the atheists. You know, the, when he was in, uh, in, in the different places, in Medina, in Kufa, especially when he spent time in Kufa as well, we'll come, we'll come to jurisprudence in a bit, uh, he, he engaged in, in debates. And this is one of the uh, narrations here. In one instance, someone asked him um, to show him God. Uh, Imam re replied, look at the sun. The man said he could not look at the sun because it was too bright. Uh, and Imam Sadiq replied, if you cannot see the created, how can you expect to see the creator? So he was engaging in such conversations. He has debates in sciences as well. And when we remember Imam Sadiq, of course, we remember the fiqh, we remember the jurisprudence, but he was a scientist, he was a mathematician, he was an economist, he was, and this is not exaggeration, there is, there is authentic sources that tell us this. And he was an expert in theology and, uh, and Islamic studies. So he has debate with his student Jab, uh, Jabir ibn Hayyan, um, and Jabir was very interested in chemistry and uh, alchemy, uh, and he was inspired by Imam Sadiq. And when he spoke about alchemy, this is Jabir, he says that my master Ja'far al-Sadiq taught me about calcium, evaporation, distillation, and crystallization, and everything I learned in alchemy was from my master Ja'far uh, al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh. Do, do you need to keep track of time. Um, how long do I have? Ten minutes. I just started. Sorry? We were late. We it's all about the football, huh? More important than Ja'far ibn Ja'far al -Sadiq. Mind you, I was watching it. Okay, <laughs> debates in jurisprudence. Uh, during the period of Imam Baqir, and Imam Sadiq, jurisprudence was expanding various uh, jurisprudence was expanding various debates on the implementation of general jurisprudential law upon new issues. So he was very much in, engaged with having debates about jurisprudence. A lot of people were asking questions: What you know? How can we? If, if this happens, then th is this allowed or is this not allowed? So he used to sit down in Kufa and debate people and sit down and answer people's questions. And he issues that did not have a ruling were brought forth. So contemporary issues at that particular time. Debates with Sunni schools of thought, mainly with Abu Hanifa and the concept of Qiyas. So I want to talk about deductive analogy, but if I don't have time, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just move on. Let's move on to today's debate. So what I thought about, as, as Imam al-Sadiq is the master of jurisprudence, and of course uh, many other topics as well, I, I thought about asking a contemporary question. Some people are debating whether we should have a merger in the West. Um, People debate, say, well, why is it that we just have maraji' in two main cities, um, Najaf and Qum? Why is that? Shouldn't we actually advance Islam and spread Islam in the West by having someone who's a very prominent person, someone who's recognized in, in terms of knowledge, in terms of status, to be uh, followed and also someone who can actually shed light on the contemporary issues and someone who can perhaps, you know, understand fiqh from a Western perspective, perhaps. Not change fiqh in terms of sharia, 
But no, in, uh, because of his upbringing, perhaps because of his understanding, because of his surrounding environment, then perhaps he can uh, change certain issues. So today, inshallah, I will, uh, what I want you to do, um, I know we don't have much time, which is disappointing, but I want part of the engagement is I want you to get, get your phones out for me. If you have a phone, of course. Whoever doesn't have a phone, buy a phone. No one here has a phone? No? Perhaps. Uh, okay, get your phones out. If you go to the, the website, the slido.com, it's written there. This is, this is a website designed for these things. I'm not making things up. This is a website designed for aud large audiences and doing polls. Anyone got to slido.com? Yes? If you write this 8198, if you write this tag, 8198, it will straight away take you to a question. 8199. Anyone got to the question? Yes? So answer the question. The question asks, do we need a merger in the West? Is it a yes or a no? Just answer that. Can we sh and then we can see the results live. Can we see the results, please? Wow, there's a lot of... So this is the results live. Uh, we can see the 80, 81%. Still people are voting, so... I give around 30 more seconds. Oh, this is the Mahfal Ali audience. Expect a large yes. Okay, so it looks like it's a, it looks like it's gone down to 79 now. It looks like there is a majority of people here think yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to argue for and against, and then we're going to do this again. And I want to see if, if people change their mind. Perhaps not. Can we get back to the slides, please? Thank you. So the answer, if we were to answer the yes, what people will actually say? They will say, all right, Maraja, they understand the challenges she has faced. In the, you know, this particular Marja who's going to come up in the West and, um, you know, he's going to be a Marja in the West, supposedly. Uh, he understands the challenges uh, face, the Shia has faced. So I'm going to give some examples. Unfortunately, I have to move fast. I didn't know I have that particular time, that amount of time. But, uh, sorry? Uh, it's very difficult. People will uh, probably leave. Um, but no, inshallah, we can. Uh, I'll give. I'll, do, I'll be a merger, and five minutes will give uh, a bit of. We go over the salah time. Five minutes. I, I'm a merger now, so it's okay. Um, so, the purity of the people of the book. Taharat al insan, right? And the Taharat al al kitab, right? There's big controversy. You know about this. You hear about. You know, the, the, the tafsirs from, from Sheikh Bahmanpur nearly every Sunday, he talks about a lot of, you know, the, these things, and, and uh, it's a debatable topic. People like Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Fallullah, whose anniversary was a few days ago, is the uh, anniversary of his death. He was one of the most prominent people, Maraj' who said, all human beings are pure, right? No one is impure, right? The thing about the, the verse in the Quran, uh, 928, Mushrikina uh, Najazi, it talks about the, 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 the soul, the, the heart, etc. You know, this is the inside, not the outside. It's not the physical Najasa. It talks about the inside Najasa, right? But many Maraja interpret it as what? As the physical Najasa, right? And it's problematic for us. I know one of the scholars got in trouble here. You know, it came out in the newspaper saying, well, you know, what do you think you're, you know, you think we're, if, you, if there's moisture and, and we shake, your hand, does that mean that we're impure? So it can cause issues in the West. I'm not debating for or against here. I'm just giving out the, uh, uh, the, the argument, and it's for you to decide. To assert the intrinsic impurity of non-believers, including the people of the book. Now, say Sistani says the people of the book, is, they're not najis, but the, those people who are mushrikeen, um, they are, right? And uh, Makarim Shirazi is a very similar view to Sayyid Fallallah. And there is different debates here going on um, in between the maraja. So whether this marja in the West will perhaps look at this differently, I'm asking, I don't know. The intergender handshaking, right? How many of us actually have issues with this, especially those people who work uh, in, a, in a professional basis, such as doctors and scientists and engineers and whatever? Right? Uh, and it's a, it's a problem. 
right? And, and the, the Maraja asked quite strict about this. You know, they say, no, you cannot, unless it is very, very um, a situation where, you know, you cannot control it and there is lots of awkwardness, etc. And لا يجوز, unless doing so, so will result in corruption, mafsada and harm, dirar, right? You got to weigh this up, you know, if, if, if someone just, uh, a lady puts her hand out, you got to think about, is this causes corruption or dirar, right? You got to think quick, and the same thing for, uh, for the woman. So this is what the, the fatawa are at the moment, even Sayyid Fallallah, who seems to be quite liberal, is, is non, hasn't gone liberal on this, right? Again, I ask a question, would someone who is a marja in the West will probably understand this slightly differently? I don't know. This is proposing a, a question. Sitting on a table where alcohol is consumed, right? Christmas time, Christmas parties, can you come out with us? It's fine, you don't need to drink. Say, yeah, but I cannot sit on a table where alcohol is consumed. Is it, but you're not drinking, you just drink, al drink um, cola or, or water. No, I can't. Again, ulama are very strict on this. I'm not saying that they should change this. Remember, I don't want people bashing me at the end, although people do that anyway. But, um, but I, you know, I'm not saying for or against it. I'm just laying it. I'm just putting it out there. Other examples, ba the bank issues, economic issues, uh, abiding by laws in the West. Some people say it's okay. You don't need to abide by the laws in the West because they're Ahlul Kuffar, whatever. Um, Again, should a marja thing. Another reason, Maraja himself, the marja himself is physically accessible to the Shia in the West. You know, physically accessible. I can actually travel and go and see him easily. Right? Um, uh, he's, he's accessible by email, by, by telephone, right? Um, and, and I can speak to him directly. And, and you know, there, there is, I remember in this place, uh, many years ago, I gave a talk about Marja'iyya, and I, and I gave examples about, you know, the time of our Imams, they, people used to say, there is, I've come from a long distance, I can't come and see you, the Imam, is there someone I can, and he, the Imams used to give names of certain people, they say, go back to those people, they will answer your questions, etc. Some people will argue that these individuals, of course, the ultimate Imam, Marja' was the Imam at that time, but of course they had these deputies, right, who had these little executive powers to, to answer questions. So it has happened perhaps in the, in the past. Uh, so, you know, this, this issue about historically Islamic scholars are flourished in peripheral regions and cities far removed from the sacred lo uh, localities. So Kufa was a place and then there were other places such as, is this a pointer? It could be and it's not, no. Um, uh, the the uh, Shiraz, Isfahan, Ray, Cairo, Tunis, you know, a lot of Mosul, a lot of these places where, where the scholars were brought up and they were having discussions and stuff. And someone will argue and say, well, why not in the West? Why can't we create this? There's now houses. You know, there's a house in, uh, in Islamic uh, college. You know, they have a house here in London. Um, there is some outside London as well. And, and so, you know, can, why can't we build this... Uh, um, system in the West as well. What, what is, what's, why is it so different in the West than the East? Is it because there's no Muslims? Look at the, the amount of Muslims and the, the rate of Islam is, uh, is, is increasing in, 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 in the West. So what can we establish in the West? Again, just a general question to put out there. No, that's... So the, regarding no and answer, should, a merge, should we have a merge in the West? If the people who say no will perhaps say Shia she, she legal theorists who set the criteria for ishtihad and marja include a array of prerequisites such as intellectual ability, spiritual devotional piety, etc. Geographical locality does not matter. A law is a law. Okay? Wherever you're situated, the jurisprudential law is a law. Wherever you're situated does not matter. It doesn't matter where you actually are, are located in. What's important is uh, you, know, how, you know, how you actually account for your affairs, your relationships, your etc. But where you are, you have to just accommodate for that. The maraja cannot tailor a specific law for uh, a specific place. So they tailor uh, a fatwa for only people in Britain. It's not possible. A tailor a fatwa for only people in the West. But no, for the people in the East, no. So handshaking is only for the people in the West. But handshaking is, not, is forbidden for the people of the East. That, that's not possible. 
right? Th these people argue. They say, you know, it becomes then uh, a, a, non, a non proper uh, system. It just becomes, what, would you, you know, what, what is your view on this? My view is if you live in here and if you live in there, what if you live in the border? What if. So people think this is just actually something that will become out of hand and, and uh, will not become systematic as how it is now. No need, the wakil will advise the maraja in the West. So there the are wakala, there's lots of wakala in America, there's wakala here, uh, deputy, whatever you call them, deputies or uh, uh, people who represent the, the maraja. And they actually can uh, take your message and go to the marja and explain to him. They say that, for example, handshaking is a problem. Would you mind, you know, is there a way of changing this particular uh, fatwa? You know, so they are here and they say there's no need for, for, a, for a merger in the West. What's the point of having representatives then? If those people, uh, you know, you cannot approach and then you can go back to, they can go back to their merger and they, they explain to, to them. So that, that is, um, and it would be wrong to conceive of the merger as a willing to accommodate the needs of their followers, you know. If, if the marajah was sitting there and say, okay, my followers, what do you want? Do you want me to uh, change the handshaking thing? All right, I'll do that. Okay, well, but this is not the, the way that they base their fatawa, right? They base their fatawa on usul, and they go back to uh, the, the traditions, on hadith, etc. And they come up with a, with a, a, a justifiable reason. Uh, you know, they, they've studied around 70 years, and they come up with a justifiable uh, fatwa reason for coming up with this particular fatwa. Yes? So it's not, it's not about what my followers want. Okay, then I'll, I'll do what my followers want. Okay? So it's not, it's not like that. Right, so what we're going to do now before we read a quick poem about Imam al-Sadiq is we're going to go back to that, um, uh, going to go back to that, can you, just before you do that, Sajjad, can you switch off and switch on this one? Okay, you've done that. So, can you go to slido.com again, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a new, a new poll, so the, the old one is, uh, is not there, so this one here. And... Tell me, which, which side are you convinced with now? Are you still those people on the yes? Are you still on the yes? Have you changed your mind? So same thing as you did before. Let me know. Eight, one, nine, eight. Everyone did it so we can see the results. Can we see the results, please? Oh dear. <laughs> so it's become worse. Nazar, what's going on? So it looks like <laughs> looks like my argument has convinced the others, uh, the the no, the yes. So people have now voted more for yes than no. Maybe the people who didn't vote, who voted for no, didn't vote this time. Oh, it's going up. I saw something going up here. Fourteen percent. Eighty-six. Okay, that's interesting. You know, the, the, this is a debate, right? I'm going to give you my view just at the end. This is just a, a quick view. Unfortunately, I'm sorry I had to go through this very quickly. Um, but my view is that I, I, I believe that we can have a hybrid of a system, right? Um, a hybrid of a system that someone who importantly is accepted and recognized as a marja by these two institutions, uh, the institutions, the institution of a marja'iyya, right? We cannot uh, forget that particular institution who is uh, very enriched with knowledge, with history. You know, you've got to go back to Kufa and the time of Imam Sadiq and all the way to Imam Ali alayhi salam, where, you know, so many scholars have graduated from that particular time. And it is a very important place. And all of, uh, nearly all of our maraja have actually graduated from the, the uh, you know, the seminaries of Hajj, uh, um, seminaries of Najaf and Qum, right? And so therefore, it is important that this particular marja, whoever he may be, actually is recognized uh, from that particular um, uh, institution. And that's a very, very important point. If that will be the case, then I am absolutely for that individual to come to the West and be a marja for the West. Because of you know, the reasons we have given, there needs to be an access. And I, I can't see the problem of having a marja in the West. This is not saying, we're not going to say, look, people don't go to Najaf anymore, right? It is, this is the centrality. You have a centrality. You have a, a marja'iyah which has a, a, a place, a location. Najaf, Qom, whatever, it's a centrality. But it's fine for certain maraja to come out 
and maybe they go back for certain studies and then come out and live in the West. But still the centrality of the Marja'iyah will still be in Najaf and Qum. I can say a lot about this, but uh, there is no time. I just wanted to um, say a, a poem at the end about uh, the, the occasion today, the martyrdom of uh, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Scavengers of thrones clashed in battle zones for power's rotten corpse for the skins and bones relieved from their binds to harvest truthful finds Sadiq could invite knowledge seeking minds you could come and ask at his class or door he spoke to your mind of chemistry and maths of medicine and more he would give he would guide to truth what grappled with your thoughts to study more and teach to unearth connecting dots while students were safe with what time remained Ja'far the Sadiq taught and had the minds unchained the scavenging contest crowned newer beasts they claimed their prize with murderous feasts to glamorize their shame they needed many blinds their target will be the chief of seeing minds Ja'far the school of thought outlived their poisoned plans Ja'far the Imam perished at their hands Ja'far the Imam perished at their hands written by Hussein Dr. Hussein Saleh Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad I'm not sure if there's time for questions but I don't think so huh no should we have one question no that's it